Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. Today we're going to look at a slightly more advanced feature, but it's definitely one that I see get requested quite often on the various Unity 3D forums and things. People want to know how to create or modify meshes, 3D models, from within Unity. Because normally, you would use a 3D modeling program like uh, like Blender or like 3D Studio Max or something like that to actually create your in-game models, your your characters, your buildings, your sofas, all, all those sorts of things would be created in a separate 3D modeling program and then imported into Blender. And Blender is mostly, or sorry, imported into Unity, and Unity is mostly there to just sort of lay out your scene and then add components and programming and, and all that kind of stuff. But you can create actual 3D meshes from within Unity uh, with programming. Uh, and you can also modify existing meshes. Now we're going to keep it a little bit more on the simple end. We're going to make relatively simple models. Um, but the simp what we're going to look at for making a simple model, you can, you can expand that as far as you want to make incredibly complex models. Just a question of time and, and math, mostly math, to try to figure out you know where everything is supposed to be laid out. So I've been playing a lot of SimCity lately, so what I have in my head is the ability to uh, lay roads onto the ground by clicking and dragging with your mouse. So that's what we're going to work on. Um, and so I've started my brand new project. I've got the layout the way that I kind of like it these days. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, a plane, just a basic plane to a plane plane to use as my ground. So if we go and we create a plane and we center it like always and we um, We'll scale it up a little, we'll go five by five, just to give us plenty of room. And oh, I had left this in wireframe mode. And then we also, we're gonna throw in a basic directional light, just to give us a little something to look at. So there we have it. And then our camera is, uh, it's pretty good. Let's, um, maybe we'll move it up a little bit more and look at it slightly more. Um, why is it rotated that way? I'm on an angle. Oh, it looks like I was at the side, but I'm not. Okay, there we go. And we'll rotate it uh, downwards. Sure, like that. Okay, so there's our basic setup. And what we are going to do, we're going to start off just like just like we've done before. It's going to be very iterative. We're going to make a very simple sort of um, behavior and then go and expand a little bit from that and expand a little bit from that and so on and so forth. So our ground plane, which I will rename as ground, we are going to make it so that when we click on the ground plane, we are going to spawn some sort of simple mesh. Um, and then we will we'll move up from there. So we definitely need, we need a script. But before I do the script, we're going to take a look at what a basic visual object in Unity looks like. So over on the right hand side in the inspector, so this whole thing is a game object. The entire, comp the entire container, I guess, is what's called a game object in Unity. And it is composed of several components. And some of the components are not really optional. For example, having a transform. Uh, the transform simply defines its position in the physical space. And the game object really needs to have that. But it actually really needs to have very little else. Uh, the next component down the line is the mesh filter. The mesh filter is what holds the information about the actual, the actual 3D model. Okay. I don't know why it's called a mesh filter as opposed to just sort of the mesh, although I guess the mesh filter contains a mesh. There's probably a really logical reason for why that word filter is in there. But so when we look at our model over here, um, you can see that this plane, and that's actually one of the things I don't really like about the, the default Unity plane, is it's made up of quite a few triangles. At the intersection of all these lines, so in the top left corner here, this corner here, this corner here, this corner here, and so on and so forth. Each one of those, this makes up the con collection of vertices. These are 3D points in space that, um, that sort of create the outline of your object. So this will be at a certain coordinate. This is another coordinate, you know, slightly further to the right. This is another coordinate, which is to the right and down or sort of towards us from the first point and so on and so forth. And in some models, for example, if we were to add a cube, then this, you know, even goes up and down. If you want, you can change the uh, the rendering mode to wireframe, you know, so you can see the sort of th see through object. So 
it is defined by a series of points. These are the vertices. And then all these points are joined together in a series of triangles. And you can clearly see the triangles here. And the triangles are what actually get rendered. This is, the triangles is what you actually see on the object. Um, so even if something looks square or kind of maybe roundish or, or, or something like that, like even I guess maybe a, a sphere might be an even better example if we we've plop that down um, and then just sort of move it off to the side here. You can see that even a sphere, which you would imagine as being round, is a series of triangles. Now, to most people, this will be really, really obvious, but it's going to become something that you really have to be consciously aware of when we start doing the, um, the actual program script, which is going to be pretty much our next step. So that's the mesh filter. It defines the vertices and the triangles and a few other bits of information that we're going to look at. The mesh collider is only something that comes up in the physics system, and it defines, it says that, um, yeah, here's the shape, here's the mesh that we're going to use as part of the collision. Um, any sort of more complex or non-obvious shape will use a mesh collider, but there are also certain basic colliders that we've looked at before. In the physics system, for example, the cube will use a box collider, which is sort of faster and uh, works a little bit better uh, for a lot of things than a, um, than a mesh collider. Um, and there's a sphere collider and capsule collider and a few other things like that. So um, that's the cube, which again, we don't really want. And then the last thing in our, in our plane game object is the mesh renderer. Now, the mesh renderer is really interesting because if we don't have the mesh renderer, if I turn it off, our object doesn't actually show up. And what you're seeing here is actually the, the mesh collider being displayed in the editor. But if we turn that off, then you also wouldn't see that. And there would be nothing visual. The mesh renderer is what tells the 3D engine how to actually display the mesh. So this is the mesh information, and this is how to display that mesh on the, the 3D video card. And it includes information like does it cast and receive shadows, what the materials are, and so on and so forth. So um, we'll turn the mesh collider back on. So that's, that's what actually makes up our object. So if we want to be able to create our own, we're going to have to be able to create a game object that has both a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. The collider is not as important. And um, we are going to have to populate some of these data values with, with something useful. So we're going to, again, we're going to start very iteratively. We are going to start by making a script.